Welcome everyone. This is Tuesday, October 15th. This is for the purposes of cable TV. And uh, we're here to talk about open enrollment. This is the actual opening day of open enrollment. But I've got to ask you all, there's another big day today that I just found out about. Do you know what this is the anniversary of today? 68 years ago today was the start of the I Love Lucy show. Oh. 1951. All right. So with that, we'll get on with the uh, Medicare, all the Medicare issues. SHINE stands for, as many of you know, serving the health insurance needs of everyone on Medicare. They provide free and unbiased insurance information and counseling to Medicare beneficiaries. See, I have to get in my ad. Over 400, over 600 volunteer SHINE counselors are available in Massachusetts and many others throughout the country, wherever you are. Now, my first question, I've got two questions here. Is there anyone here who will be new to Medicare starting in either November next month or December of this year? No hands are up. Okay. Is there anyone here who will be new to Medicare on or after January 1, 2020? Do we have a person? Okay, one person. Keep it in mind as I go along. Thank you. So with that, let's proceed. The first item was, that I have is actually a reminder. We all received last year new Medicare cards. The old ones will not work after December 31 of this year. So if you don't have a new Medicare card, you have the old one, uh, we want to get that squared away before long. And the old ones actually uh, can be, maybe you want to save them as a souvenir, but otherwise, they have, certainly after December 31, they can be discarded. Medicare consists of four parts. Part A, the hospital insurance. Part B, medical insurance. And when you combine them, A and B, and uh, an element of D, you have what they call Part C, which is a Medicare Advantage plan situation. The fourth part is the Medicare prescription drug coverage, Part D. Those are the four parts of Medicare. There is another part that's outside of Medicare, and that's Medigap plans. They're issued by the Massachusetts Department of Insurance. And what I'm talking about with these four parts are what comes from the Center for, uh, uh, for, uh, yeah, for Studies for Medicare out of Washington, CMS. Part A, again, is hospital benefits. When you're admitted to a hospital, it has a deductible and co-pays. Except that when you actually utilize Part A and you have it on your card, you, well, yes, you're covered for about 80% of what's going to happen with a catastrophic hospital benefit. And the deductible and the copays would come out uh, of roughly the other 20%. So if you don't have anything but A and B, which is the original Med Medicare, then you're still liable potentially for quite a bit of uh, quite a bit of expense if you have to utilize these services. Part B is the medical out outpatient insurance. It's good for doctor's visits, labs, outpatient clinics. It has a deductible and a copay. And you have in your handout, <coughs> I think, you don't, we'll get it to you. I have some here. It's a listing of, I guess it's the fourth sheet. We have a listing of preventative services. It's a two-sided sheet. And I have them here. I'll get, to get them to you at, 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 as we finish. It's a list of all the services that you get through Part B, mostly screenings and tests for either no cost or low cost. So that's quite an impressive list. Part C again is Medicare Advantage. It's the one way to get your Medicare benefits. And they're structured basically as eight, usually HMOs and once in a while PPOs with co-pays, co-insurance deductibles for the services that you get. Part D is a Medicare prescription drug coverage that helps to pay for outpatient prescription drugs. In both the original Medicare, that's via a standalone prescription drug plan, and with the Medicare Advantage plans, Medicare Advantage plans come usually with the prescription drug coverage built in. You have two main 
choices for coverage with Medicare. Original Medicare, which is again Part A and Part B, or Medicare Advantage plans. You can decide which way you want to get your coverage. Original Medicare again includes Part A hospital insurance, Part B medical insurance. You may choose to buy a Medicap policy to help cover the deductibles. You can also choose to buy Medipare, Medicare prescription drug coverage, Part D, from a standalone prescription drug plan. Now, uh, the second option is the mass, is the, uh, is the, uh, advantage, uh, the advantage plans, like a health, like an HMO, health maintenance organization, or PPO. They cover the A, B, A and B services and supplies. They may include prescription drug coverage. The important thing to take away from this is if you have a Medicare Advantage plan, whether or not you have prescription drug coverage within it, and usually you would, that precludes you from getting a standalone prescription drug plan. You cannot have both. And uh, by the way, I was going to say, somebody, I was asked, uh, you may have some questions as we go along or seek clarifications. I suggest we hold them until the end and we'll go over every question that you have. It's quite possible, I say hopefully, that as we go along, I'll answer whatever question you may have. If not, we'll cover what your, what your concerns are afterwards. The, the, the other type of policy, which is outside of uh, Medicare, as I mentioned, is the Medigap policies. And they are ish, they're private health insurance that supplements original Medicare. You still must have Part A and B in place. It's a supplement so that Medicare still remains your primary insurer. Medigap backs it up. You pay a monthly premium, and you still must pay your part. Whichever direction you go in Medicare, you still have a Medicare Part B premium. They're right now usually about $135.50 per year. And again, on these Medigap plans, prescription drug coverage is not included, so you need to have a standalone prescription drug plan. There are two types of uh, Medigap plan, and let me uh, just back up a half a step and say that the environment this year for plans is as follows. Medicare Advantage plans in Massachusetts and Middlesex County, there are 30 plans to choose from. Standalone prescription drug plans, there are 20. Medigap plans, there are three. But nobody should panic because uh, that list can be shaved down very quickly when you realize that you're working with a primary care doctor, and hopefully, uh, presumably, you're working with one that you like, that you want to stay with. And the big takeaway from all this is not every doctor will have coverage for every one of these plans. So that will eliminate quite a few as, as you start. Two types of plans on a Medigap are a core plan, which is a basic benefit plan, and a supplement one, which covers most all gaps. It covers almost everything. You pay a premium once a month, and you get full coverage. Uh, again, no, no prescription drug coverage, but you get complete coverage. Core plan is basically the same plan as a supplemental one plan. The premium is about half of what the supplement one would be, but you are responsible for the first $1,360-$61 each time you are admitted into a hospital. And if you were unfortunate enough to be in a situation where you had to be admitted more than once, if they're 60 days apart, you'd be responsible for that amount each and every time. We have a, an additional person. I'd like to ask you just to pick up the handouts that are right over on the counter here and, and join in. Medigap has some changes for 2020. Basically, the change is not going to impact any one of you in this room who are already on Medicare. For anyone going on to Medicare on or after January 1, 
the supplement one that we've had for a number of years will not be available to any people going in at that time. What will be available is the supplement 1A. It's a new plan very similar to the other one, uh, to the one. The only major difference, in fact, the only difference is that the uh, supplement 1A does not cover the Part B deductible. Supplement 1 does. Part B deductible in 2019 was $185. Uh, the 2020 has not yet been released. It hasn't been determined. For the core plan, there were no changes. Again, the Medicare Advantage plans, sometimes called Part C, usually includes prescription drug coverage. Medicare Advantage plans are handled by private insurance companies approved by Medicare. That private insurance company is your primary insurer. Medicare will back them up. In most of these Medicare Advantage plans, you need to use plan doctors, hospitals, and other network providers. Because if you go out of network, you're going to pay more. In any event, again, whichever route you take on these, you have uh, you get a, you run Medicare, you have a Part B premium. The 135.50, incidentally, is the basic premium. If your earnings exceed roughly $87,000, I think it's somewhere around that. Uh, your premium would go higher. So the, the people that are very rich have to pay a higher premium. But most of all of us are dealing with a premium of 130, 135.50 at this point. So let me just do a brief comparison between the two types of plans. We've got Medigap on the one hand and Medicare Advantage on the other hand. Medigap will have higher, this is a generality, but it's a true statement. Generally, we'll have higher monthly premium, but no co-pays and no co-insurance. Medicare Advantage plans will be a bit of a lower premium, but you've got co-pays, co-insurance, maybe deductibles as well. Medigap, you have a freedom to choose any doctor you want who takes Medicare patients anywhere in the country. For Medicare Advantage plans, you are restricted to a network. Your primary care doctor will be your quarterback, your admission ticket to other doctors and specialists that are within the network that you might have to be referred to. Medigap plans, no referrals are necessary. Your network is wherever Medigap, wherever Medicare is. For Medicare Advantage plans, you may need referrals, likely will need referrals from your primary care to see a specialist. And again, that's uh, the most important thing probably on these Medigap is they're covered anywhere in the U.S. and some plans offer limited uh, foreign travel insurance as well. Medicare Advantage plans will be covered in the U.S. but only for urgent and emergency services and for routine maintenance, follow-up, rehab, PT, OT, whatever, if something happens to you when you're in Florida and you have a Medicare Advantage plan, you have to come back here to get your treatment and follow-up care for that. And again, uh, Part B, I've got a slide here that talks about Part B preventive benefits, and it's just as a list of... Uh, of uh, Mammograms, screenings, bone mass measurements, uh, there's an annual wellness visit, and many other things that are covered under Part B. If you have a guaranteed indemnity coverage, if you are, get, your medic, get your health coverage from a retiree plan or a government plan, your options, just note that your options and enrollment times may very well be different. The rules that I'm talking about are those that apply to Medicare plans. These plans are, have the equivalent types of benefits that Medicare plans have. And in some cases, they are better, benef better benefits, but the cost can range from 
very low to very high depending on the arrangements that, let's say, the employer has made. Open enrollment, again, starts today, October 15th. It runs through December 7th. I'm kind of a history nut, so uh, I never forget December 7th because I know it's Pearl Harbor Day. So that's, that's when an open enrollment ends. You get a lot of mail. You see a lot of ads on TV. You get a lot of mail, flyers about Medicare and about all the wonderful plans you can get into. It's very important that you open, in particular, any mail you get from your current plan holder. If you're in Medicare now and you get something from them, that deserves your, intent, your attention. And some of the other stuff you can look at or in, in uh, junk it as you wish. Open enrollment ends on December 7th, and of course the objective is to get you situated in a plan up and running on January 1, 2020. If you're in Medicare plans now and you decide not to make any changes, there is nothing you have to do. You, you know, the plan that you're in will presume that going forward you're continuing with them, unless or until they hear otherwise. At the same token, if you do make a move for a good reason, there are good reasons to make moves at time. If you make a move and you move from plan A, insurance company A, to insurance company B, you will enroll with insurance company B and they will let company A know that you're being disenrolled. So it will all work out. And speaking of the mail that you get from your own company, these companies are required to notify you by October 1 of any changes that will be made to your plan for 2020. And I know in my case that I did get something in the mail a few weeks ago that lists some series of minor changes that have taken place in the plan that I'm in. So for open enrollment options, you want to review your Medicare drug health and supplement coverage options and decide which option will be best for you next year. It involves comparing plan prices, coverage, and benefits. You've got to decide whether to stay in your current plan or enroll in a new plan by December 7th. The history of this situation uh, tells me that if you go back several years, the vast majority of people if they were relatively content with the plan they had, tended to stay with the plan. As time has gone forward and prescription drug deals are cut between drug, drug companies, health plans, and the people who produce the, the drugs, pharmaceuticals, these contracts are renewed year to year. And it's, in many cases, the contracts are changed. So what was best one year, let's say, I'm, I'm, I'm just using this as an example, what might have worked out best for you by going to Walgreens, for instance, to pick up a prescription because that was the preferred pharmacy at the time, that may or may, may, or may not have completely changed for next year. It could be that your preferred pharmacy is CVS or vice versa. Things are jumping and moving around all the time. I've got uh, one item that you do have. You've got a handout, uh, a free sheet. So one of them is the 2020 Medicare Part D coverage gap explanation, also known as the donut hole. <laughs> this has been a complex situation over the years. The effects of the donut hole are gradually closing out. Uh, you'll notice that uh, there's a, a standard annual deductible. Not all prescription drug plans have this as a charge up front, but this is the, this is the barometer of summer at 435, summer less, summer zero, because they make up for it in other ways. In the initial coverage phase, you pay for 2020, 
you'd pay 25% for the co-insurance and the plan pays 75% for each covered drug until the combined drug cost plus the deductible reach the margin of 4,020. At that point, you go into the donut hole. And you're there from $4,020 until $6,350. Early on, that was catastrophic because you ended up absorbing much, if not most, maybe even all the costs in that donut hole. Well, yes, the uh, donut hole structure is still in place. Please note, once you get into that, at this point, the Benny, you pay 25%, 25% of brand name drugs and 25% of generic drugs until you've reached the 6,350 out of pocket. And in the gap, the gap will close somewhat quicker than you might expect because, as it says below, the amount the member pays is in and 70% of the discounted amount for brands counts towards the 6,350. So somebody that's heavy into medications and they reach the donut hole, the chances are they may very well go through it pretty quickly and pass into the catastrophic coverage range, which is that last category that's listed on that sheet. The back side of the sheet does some math and has a graph that shows what I've just talked about in a slightly different way, but the back of the sheet and the front of the sheet are comparable, comparable information. Um, when you talk about the Part D prescription drug plans, not all plans are equal. The payment structures may vary significantly, and the factors that can cause this variance are as follows. The monthly premium, which can range from a low down of $16, $17, $18 a month up to uh, uh, well over uh, 100 a month. Deductibles, co-payments, the tiers, T-I-E-R-S, what makes up tier one drug, two drug, three, four, and five. Tier one drugs are your lowest cost drugs, tier five are the, the highest and everything in between. Uh, formularies can vary from plan to plan to some extent, not vastly, but from some extent they will vary. And as formularies change slightly almost every year, uh, will be to the person who has a slight formulary change, and lo and behold, it's the one expensive drug they're taking and it just got more expensive. Those are the kind of things that uh, you really have to take into consideration. The uh, standalone prescription drug list that I passed out is also not final. And it also is, I guess, the best example I can give. If you don't rely on that, this is background information. Background, does everybody have that? No. 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 Stand alone in the package that I brought this forward. No, you gave us uh, a list of uh, Medigap coverage. Advantage plans. Yeah, uh, advantage plan coverage. Okay, stand alone prescription drug. Here we go. If I could ask somebody to, sorry about that, if I could ask somebody to just. Uh, Hand those one to everybody. It's a one sided sheet only. Thank you. This is also uh, not a, I've got a few more. Oh, I need some more. Thank you. What do you do? Um, it's not a final, but these, this is not final either. Anybody else not need one? And it serves as a framework for, uh, as you investigate what drug plan you might want to 
that might be the best fit for you. And the reason for that is, I, I just will make this, if you go by this, if you take a prescription drugs and you go by this to make a determination, it's the same thing as though you were going house hunting. And you went into a neighborhood and you saw this house that looks great, it's got a nice yard, and you decided that's the house for me, and you, go, you proceed to make an offer on it. What you haven't done is check the inside of the house. <laughs> That's what we're talking about here. And there is a uh, new Medicare plan finder tool. There has been one on system for several years that worked fairly well, but CMS decided to try to make uh, a series of improvements in this uh, plan finder. And uh, <clears throat> unfortunately, ran into some problems as of the 10th, when I went to my training session, there was still 12 or so patches or fixes they were intending to make to the computerized program to get it working completely. As of this morning, 11 of the 12 fixes are in place. The 12th fix involves something to do with the printing process when you print these out. The plan finder is an excellent tool and I would say, if anyone is planning on using it, I would wait a few days, let things settle down, and get into it. It can be accessed by going to www.medicare.gov. <coughs> there are two ways of using, well, the purpose of the plan finder, first of all. If you want to go into that, decide which way you're taking your prescription drugs. By that I mean, Standalone plan, or are you in a Medicare Advantage plan where the prescriptions are embedded within that plan? <clears throat> it's going to ask you to make a decision which way you want to go. And you're going to then proceed to enter each drug that you're taking into the system, the exact name, the exact dosage, the exact frequency. You're going to keep repeating that step until you get your entire drug list into the system. You'll then be able to get a result. This is one of the fixes that was made for t put in place today. You're going to get a result which is going to take those 20 drug plans and list them for you in lowest cost order based on your situation. So plan number one is going to be the lowest cost based on what you're taking at the, at the moment you are doing this. And each Playing below that, it will get a little, it'll get a little more expensive. The one word of warning I would give is if when you look at a plan, it's much, if it's much lower than plan two, you can click open that plan and see what's going on. Uh, it's possible that one of the drugs that you entered is not being covered. Mm -hmm. That being said, I think one of the things that they're now doing in this prescription plan finder is indicating that. But I wouldn't take a chance, I would take a look. And th th this will allow you to come up with either the lowest uh, standalone, lowest cost standalone plan. It takes into account co-pays, deductibles, monthly premiums, cost of, uh, to, to pick up the uh, prescriptions, all that's amalgamated, if that's the word, together, and it'll come up with a bottom line cost for you for that plan. Alternatively, you can enter these, you can then switch it back over. You don't have to enter the drugs again. Now let me see it on a Medicare Advantage scale. And it will bring out <clears throat> the Medicare Advantage plan. Do the same thing. When it gets to the total cost, it's going to be the total cost for the plan. Cost, uh, uh, not just the prescription drugs, but the prescription drugs are the variable, the biggest variable anyway, in that plan. And it's an excellent way of uh, coming up with uh, the ideal plan. If you were entertaining the thoughts of going into a standalone prescription drug plan, because you need to have the coverage in place on a timely basis, if you go in, into any of these plans late, uh, you're facing the potential of a late enrollment 
penalty, which lasts the life of the, your situation with Medicare. The one time you can use that standalone list and just pick one is if you've got no prescriptions right now. Well, let's say you get one that's maybe maybe a tier one that's eight bucks or something, and if you know it's not changing, uh, okay. But ideally, if, if you've got no prescriptions, use that list and go with the lowest cost drug plan that's on that list for the first for the next year. You can always go back in and change it the following year. Anything you do, of course, you're setting yourself up for the next year. However, there's an out here. Medicare Advantage Plan. If you go ahead and sign up for a Medicare Advantage Plan, or you stay in the plan you're in right now, it's a Medicare Advantage Plan. There is a new, it was new last year, and it's been uh, being publicized more this year. Medicare Advantage Open Enrollment Period from January 1, 2020 through March 31, 2020. This gives you the right to drop the plan you have at any point during that time and either go back to original Medicare or pick up another Medicare Advantage plan, which seems to be a better fit for you and you would then use that one for the rest of the year. And I, this possibly becomes even more important this year because I think there'll be more people checking plan finders and maybe not truly finalizing what they want or they thought they had something finalized and uh, it turned out not to be. Or you've got a situation where you finalize it and everything's in place and lo and behold something happens to you and December and you're, you pick up a flurry of new prescriptions that you didn't have in your plan finder. You can add those in and make that change uh, in the first quarter of next year. That is not the case for the standalone prescription drug plan. If you go into that, once you're in it, you're in it through the year. Your only option is to drop out and not pick up anything else. So you've got to be careful with that. Now. There's two ways of using the plan finder. One is what I call the anonymous route, where you just go in, they're going to ask to plug in a zip code, and that's all, and, and uh, then you start listing your meds. And you get the same results as you would uh, with the other method that I'm just about to talk about. With the anonymous route, if you use that, once you go out of the system, or you get tossed out of the system, as my wife knows, I get tossed out of systems all too often. Uh, if you get tossed out of the system, or you just decide to leave and come back the next day, you got 30 drugs, or you got 15 in, and something else has come up, and you, you want to take a break. <coughs> if you go out of that system on the anonymous route, and you try to go back in, it's all gone. You need to start all over again. Step one, as though you hadn't done anything. The option this year, and this is the new part, you would need to set up a personalized approach which involves setting up a MyMedicare.gov account. And there are steps to help you do that when you're on the system. Because when you log, if you start putting in your information, or you put all your information in, it's stored there, and maybe you're not going to make a decision or refer to it for several days. You can go back in, go back into your My Medicare doc account, you'll have a user pass name and pass pa username and password. Just go back in and pick up everything will be there. You can pick up right where you were. So again, if you if you do an anonymous search, which is possible, the drug list cannot be saved. I guess the message is at this point, choose wisely. Annual costs can vary by thousands of dollars. You want to make sure you're in the best plan based on your health, drug coverage, and cost. Remember, in signing up for a plan, this is not a lifetime decision. Medicare is a lifetime decision, but the plan that you're going into in 2020 is good for 2020. You have the opportunity to hear somebody here again next year talk about open enrollment, 
and go through the process for 2021. You want to review your drug plan and or Medicare Advantage plan each year during open enrollment to still see if it will is the best plan. Questions will be, in deciding a plan, <clears throat> will my plan cover all the drugs I take? How much does my plan cost? Does my plan have a deductible? And, which I alluded to earlier, <coughs> which Medicare Advantage plans does my doctor work with? There are ways to lower your Part D drug costs. Ways that can be used if your drugs are either very expensive or not covered under your plan. <clears throat> the first way to do it is to ask your plan for an exception to see if the plan will cover it. Once in a while it happens. Ask your plan to cover the drug at a lower cost tier. <coughs> Doesn't hurt to ask, once in a while it can happen. Check with your doctor to see if a lower cost brand name or a generic drug is on the formulary and that he or she is comfortable with you switching to that particular drug. Be sure you're using the lowest cost pharmacy because pharmacies are written on these deals with the pharmaceuticals and the health plans. And what you basically want to use is a preferred pharmacy or mail order. And each of the uh, of the pro each of the health plans, each of the standalone prescription drug plans has their own mail order affiliate. Most, I should say, each or a few that don't. Most of them do have mail order options, and you can you, they will tell you who they are and where they are. Mail order five six years ago, maybe it's a little longer than that. You could say mail order, and it was automatically always cheaper. That is no longer the case. And in some cases they are, and in other cases they're more expensive. So it involves work on your part of that to check that out. If you're using a pharmacy, you want to lose the low, use the lowest cost pharmacy for the particular plan that you're in, and that's called a preferred pharmacy. You'll get preferred pharmacy pricing. In every <coughs> drugstore out here, there is a preferred pharmacy for some health plan or health plans. But not every drugstore is a preferred pharmacy for every health plan. That's the rub. They do things to just to, get, just to challenge you, I think. The other thing you can do, just to make it, difficult. It, it never hurts, ask your pharmacist if the cost can be lowered. There are some individual programs out there, Needy Meds is one. Some of the pharmacies have little cards right on the counter, and I didn't bring any today. I have some in one of my bags at home. Uh, Needy Meds is one, and there's a few others that will allow you to get allow you to get uh, potentially discounted drugs. Check to see if you're eligible for any any existing programs, such as Extra Help. That's the federal program that can it's income uh, uh, sensitive. You get that by applying through Social Security. So if your income is low enough, you would be eligible, perhaps, for extra help. Prescription Advantage in Massachusetts. It's a Massachusetts program. It's statewide. It's not a, a health plan. It's not a drug plan. It's a financial wrap that wraps around whatever plan you're in. And this plan looks at your income only. It does not look at assets to determine whether you're eligible. And before you forget about it, Prescription Advantage kicks in, in a small way, to people with income of up around $75,000, $80,000. Obviously, the lower the income you have, the greater the help you get. But that program is available, uh, applications are available, you need to file with the Prescription Advantage people in Massachusetts. And there are other assistance programs that are based on income and or and or assets. So there's various ways to, to work this out. Um, uh, yeah, I'll be more specific here on prescription advantage, if you're over 65 and on Medicare, single, in, if you're single, income must be at or below, <coughs> not quite as high as I thought, 62,450. However, if you're married, it's income below 84,550 that kicks in. 
wherever there are income levels listed as being the determinant for a program, they're looking at the bottom line on your federal tax return. That's where it comes from. For prescription advantage, again, there's no asset limit. Benefits include one chance a year to change plans outside of enroll, outside of open enrollment, special enrollment period. And again, there are other programs around as well. Uh, Mass Health is a program that's income and asset sensitive, but it has many programs within it to help people with uh, uh, needy people who are in a, a bad situation. One of the one of the better programs, I think, is uh, uh, the PACE program, which allows people who otherwise might be headed for nursing home, they're nursing home eligible, to stay in the house. It applies, surprise, supports and benefits to enable that to happen. And there's expanded eligibility for some of these programs, which are going to take place in January of this year. So I think the key is for most people are going to want to try to use the, the plan finder to see where they're at uh, with respect to the, to the drugs. I can try and help people here with it during an uh, during appointment period. Uh, anybody that has a computer can get on it and, and do it uh, at home. Or it might be a combination of both situations. Uh, for all your Medicare questions, Shine appointments are available throughout the year at your senior center. I'm here on Tuesday afternoons going forward. Uh, after the afternoon, we meet right usually in the back room right back here. We're back at a cameraman, and uh, we can do that by appointment. I will try to squeeze in other appointments during the week. This is kind of a one-room schoolhouse, so it becomes a little bit difficult at times, but we try to squeeze in some other times if necessary. There are some senior centers where the Shine appointments have already booked up solid. Not the case here yet. But I just want to point out, if and when you run into situations where no appointments are available, uh, another option would be to call 1-800-MEDICARE. They are available 24-7. As time goes on, as you start moving through the open enrollment period, their lines tend to get swamped and they tend to get swamped. But, they uh, were swamped this morning. I'm sorry? They were swamped this morning. Medicare? 1-800-MEDICARE? Yeah. Yeah, they can get uh, for other reasons besides just getting uh, getting appointments, but I think you're right because this is the first day. This is the first day that anybody could make an appointment through Medicare. So apparently they've already been deluged with, with calls. And uh, I think I've covered everything that I can. I'm going to see if I, what am I missing? One exhibit, I think, that I want to try and give you guys. And I'll see if I can pull that out. But that's the gist of what I have to say. And I'd be happy to try and deal with any questions that you might have, any general questions at this point. And uh, then after that, I can hang on if there's any more specific programs or uh, questions. Obviously, we can't do a complete review of everybody's situation today. But yes, hi. You gave a copy of the Medicare Advantage plan. Do you have a, a printout of the Medigap? That's a good question. I've avoided that. <laughs> I'll tell you what. That, the sh Medigap sheets come from, not from CMS, where this stuff comes from, from the Mass Division of Insurance. And I think it may be because of the addition of this new product, the Supplement 1A, it's not ready yet. They haven't even finalized it um, for next year. Having said that, if you're in a Medigap plan already, um, if you do nothing, you would continue in that plan. Uh, some of the plan, there are six, seven, eight Medigap plans in the state. And I'm reaching because I've got a had in front of me a copy of last year's. I do not have this year's. But of those six or seven or eight, half of them are have an contract anniversary dates at the end of June. Many of them don't even renew on January 1. Um, but it's safe to say that if you're in one, can I ask you which plan that you're in? Which carrier? Oh, Harvard Pilgrim. I'm sorry? Harvard Pilgrim. Harvard Pilgrim, okay. Uh, in 2000, and, uh, 
Here we go. It's right in front of me here. In 2019, well, let me back up. I'll say a few things about the Medigap plans. I had indicated that Medigap, there were only three plans for Medigap. Three plans. And one of them is that new one. The Supplement 1 plan and the core plan are the ones that have been around for many years, so that's the two plans we're usually dealing with. Mm -hmm. And for all you folks, except for the lady who's just going on Medicare, those are the plans that you would continue to deal with if you stay in the Medigap arena. Please be aware that there was only one Supplement 1 plan that the Massachusetts Insurance Department agrees to issue. They will issue it to any carrier who will issue that, who will agree to go with that plan. The Division of Insurance tells the carriers, if you do that, you can run with that plan, and you can charge whatever you think is appropriate for that plan. <laughs> Having said that, in 2019, right now, the, you say Harvard Pilgrim? The Harvard Pilgrim monthly charge is $220. For the same plan, Blue Cross is $197.74. Now, <clears throat> they do include, some of them include a couple of bells and whistles, vision, hearing, one of them has a dental, for a few bucks a month. So the additional types of benefits that you get on these are very minimal. Indeed. You can imagine, for instance, on uh, Habit Pilgrim doesn't have any, as in 2019. Blue Cross, for instance, had uh, vision and hearing, the additional premium is $3 a month. You can imagine how much coverage you're going to get from there. Mm -hmm. um, they all issue the same plan. So, Shine Counselors never recommend plans. We can't, we won't. There's only one plan here. I'm not recommending a plan. Based on 2019, this past year when I've talked to people, I recommend Blue Cross because it's the lowest cost. And it's the same with their core plan, they're the lowest cost. Uh, and unfortunately, these sheets used to say when their renewal period is, and I don't have that, do not have that information. They are due out in a couple of weeks. Uh, when I get them, I'll have them. Uh, if we're going to have an appointment, we uh, would have it for you by, likely by then. Uh, I can get you one anyway. Mm -hmm. I'll have a few here eventually, leave them at the senior center. I don't know when that will be. I don't have a precise date on it. But you'll have it in plenty of time for Thank you. make a choice on, on open enrollment. Would that affect, when, when they, if they were going to change it from the $220, would they have notified us already? Or would that have, would this uh, affect that? that, that uh, they might be waiting? They should to... notify you before they change it. Yeah. But the situation is with Harvard, with any of these now, I don't know when their date is. Yeah. If their change date is June 30, then I wouldn't have, wouldn't have notified you yet. So I, I just don't have that information. Um, <clears throat> I've got, I, oh, wait a minute, I've got, I'm tempted to think it's year round because I've got, uh, Humana is in this and they, I've got a date of October 1. 2018 is when they uh, changed their pricing. And that's that was their contract change year. And United Healthcare was six one. Uh, 2019. It may be that the others are all calendar year anniversaries. I just don't know. And if that's the case, they should notify you uh, in time to make that change. And. Here's the thing with the Medigap plans. I'm talking about open enrollment and what you have to do by a certain date. Medicare Advantage plans are open enrollment sensitive. Standalone prescription drug plans are open enrollment sensitive. Medigap plans are not. So that tells me that if you hear on December 15th, prices whatever, 
You can go to any one of these companies in late December and enroll for January 1. And if you're going to stay where you are, you do nothing. But if you're going to enroll in another one, you can make that change in late December. If you do that, take that approach, you just want to be sure to have your standalone prescription drug plan in place in a timely manner by December 7th. All right, any, anything else at this point for a question, a general question? Yes? When can we make appointments with you? I'm sorry? When can we make appointments with you? Right, right today. Right today. You're going to do it? Yep. Sherry's back here. She's got the book. And, yep. Okay. Absolutely. So we can start with, uh, start with, uh, start with next week. Um, I would suggest particularly if, if there's uh, prescription drug issues that if you decide to see me or anybody else anywhere else, have your complete list, exact name, exact dosage, exact frequency, if your drugs, if you want to run it off the computer first, bring it, whatever you want, but we, we got to have that to work with. So. And I think that's about all I have, unless anybody has any other questions at this point. Thank you all for attending. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. We brought you in.